Hi everyone and welcome to our September Global Monthly Video Hop with a theme of Casing the Catalogue. I'm Rachel Merrick, Independent Stamping Up Demonstrator from Queensland in Australia. And this month I'm really happy to be having this theme coming my way because this is exactly what I like to do. So enjoy my video. Alrighty, so we're going to make a start on the box that comes from the Grassy Grove um, stamp set and matching die set that is on page 85 of the annual catalogue. So here we have the annual catalogue and here is page 85. Now I'm just going to bring it up a little bit closer. This actually uses one of the um, pre-made or, or folded boxes that you can purchase through Stamping Up. But today I wanted to use some DSP because I've always got DSP and this means I can make a custom size box. So I wanted one slightly smaller than the sample that was shown in the catalogue. So I really love Grassy Grove as a um, stamp set. It's, um, oh, my camera's a bit wonky. Um, it's very cute. So uh, a lot of shadows, more so than an actual image. Um, so you get that sunset or sunrise dusk kind of effect with your stamps. This is a set of nine. Um, it's a clean set stamp. So it has these tall trees, um, kind of a... Um, a meadow-ish you know set of flowers it has this whole background which is like a rocky mountainside another group of trees and the deer and it also has a couple of really nice sentiments today we're going to use the thank you sentiment because that's the one that's used in the catalog as well and you'll see me use a couple of different things to what is in the catalog because I like to change things up a little bit when I am casing from a catalog so today, instead of the traditional crumb cake, I am going to use crumb cake, but I am also going to use evening evergreen. And I'm going to use a sponge dauber with that one on my stamps, just to show you how you can get a two-tone effect. I am going to use this ribbon. Um, I think this is an older ribbon, but really it was the only one that I had that had the matching um, deep green. Now this deep green, I'm pretty sure out of this set. So I have got some... Um, rhinestones which I'll pop to the side and my DSP. Now I'm using the Artfully Composed DSP. Um, this one like I said has the Evening Evergreen um, colour in it. Um, this one here when I turn it over you'll see there's lots of oranges and things in that set. I just wanted the dark green and white. I wanted it really crisp. So that's what I've cut out. I've cut out two um, six by six inch squares and I have already scored them because it's really hard to see anyway um, I hope you can kind of see so I've scored them there at one and a half inches all the way around both of them We're going to create the box first of all before we do any of our stamping So to create the box and I've also got um, my middle piece, which I'll show you shortly to create the box Like I said, you have your six by six and then you do your one and a half or actually I think I've done one and three quarters, no, one and a half, I think it was, um, around the sides. So you get all four sides. And then I'm going to take my scissors, and it might be a bit tricky for you to see, and that's why I kind of got without my lights because I'm hoping, hoping that the shadows will reach. And I'm going to cut up to one line, and I'm going to take a little triangular notch out of that one. I'm going to do the same on this side, trickier to see. That marking on the video and taking out that small triangular notch doesn't have to be perfect this is the part that's going to be folded to create our box so another side so that's three sides done and our last side now the adhesive you're going to use for this is entirely up to you I really like liquid adhesive and now that I've started my video, I'm a little bit afraid that my liquid adhesive <laughs> is um, almost at its end. I'm going to repeat the same process very quickly on um, this paper as well. So I'm going to have a lid and obviously a base. Um, when you do this, you're best to try very hard when you're scoring all your sides 
just so that the box and the lid fit together nicely, just on one of them to make it just a tiny, like I'm talking a, a width of a piece of paper, um, a bit smaller on your scoring, and that's a bit hard to explain, but you just take it just shy of your one and a half inches. Now I'm going to fold all these on those score lines and I'm actually going to use my bone folder, but first of all, I'm just going to fold, fold, fold. And I will use my bone folder shortly to sharpen up some of those edges. And fold it, score that one here. I will just score these middle ones more than anything because they're the ones that I want the edges of the box to be nice and sharp. And repeat with this one. Almost there. Be careful when you are scoring your DSP because it is slightly thinner, or most of them are slightly thinner than cardstock, so they will tear if you're a little bit rough with your scoring, but um, just go over it just gently, just enough to make an, an impression or an indentation. Now I'm going to grab my wonderful Tombow white glue and hope that it's got some in it, and if not, ooh, the tiniest bit's coming out, and they get stuck so easily dried up so I pull out we there we go pull out the little plug that's been formed I'm going to do both sides on these little flaps and then we're going to tuck them under and line them up one and you just have to hold them for a second whilst that glue begins to set it doesn't have to completely set because you're going to set it aside in a second and then the next ones so fold that one here now, if you feel like these flaps are a little bit too big and they might overlap slightly in the middle, then you can just trim some of it off so it's a little bit shorter. But I just don't bother most of the time unless I feel that there's a major problem with the overlap. Square boxes tend to not have that overlap, which is handy. Come on, Mr. White Glue. There we go. Um, and here goes our first side on our white section. Like I said, you can use cardstock for this or you can use any DSP. DSP is sturdy enough for small boxes. Bigger boxes, maybe not so much so. But the smaller boxes seem to have a lot more strength because they are smaller. And you have got a little bit of this overlap as well. So I would encourage you to use up some of your DSP to create little boxes like this. And this is a simple project. Sorry, I'm taking it off camera. This is a simple project that you can throw together in any colour scheme using really any of the stamp sets that you've probably got in your stash out of the catalogue and create a very quick, um, so, you know, something to, to gift. I mean, you can throw um, some chocolates in here or a pair of socks that would fit perfectly folded up. Um, I have gift. I have made some in the past using retired products like the gold um, mini pizza boxes and filled it with things like a little stamping spot and a few embellishments as a gift for when I hold um, stamping get-togethers and have a little bit of a lucky draw. So that's another option as well. Um, but like I said, all those sweet things, all the small things, um, you could make a slightly bigger one and throw in some cookies and a gift card or something similar um, for um, a birthday present or a Christmas present or whatever. Pr Christmas presents, these are great because um, you often go looking for something. Now, if you fit it in and push it up, so like I said, just be gentle because you don't want to... Um, undo all that glue whilst it's still still setting now my biggest tip here is as you can see just try not to push it all the way down it does make it easier when you're gifting it so there is our little box okay and it um i'm just going to pop it to the side because now we're going to create the top part of it now for the top part i have got 
a white piece. Now this is very simple because it's going to sit on here. So it's already got that nice green border around the outside from the lid of the box. And I am going to stamp on that. So I'm just gonna grab a piece of blank paper, or blank-ish paper, some um, leftover paper that I have, some scrap paper. So it's not the cleanest, I apologize. But this here, we are going to do some simple repeated stamping. I'll bring in the example again. There is some background stamping and then you'll see there's one stamped image that's popped up and I have pre-stamped one and it's just in crumb cake. But I'm going to show you how I'm going to stamp this one using a two-tone effect. So I'm going to use the crumb cake as the main color. Um, one of my favorite colors, crumb cake. And then I have got the Evening Evergreen, which is going to obviously match in my color there. Now I do have um, some daubers. My daubers are very worn, but that doesn't stop them from being effective when you need to be. And they tend to be in colors, oh, and they always fall out. So here is my one that is green. Okay, I'm going to pop that over here to the side. And here is my stamp. So here is my um, stamped, uh, like with the, the tall pine trees. I'm going to ink that up, first of all, in the crumb cake. Then I'm going to get my dauber and just put a little bit. You probably can't even see it, and you won't see it on here. I'm just going to add a little bit to the tops and sides of those trees, and you literally don't need much. Let me do a sample stamp first so you can see. And there you go. Probably hard to tell, but I will lift it up to the camera once I've started. So you get that two-tone effect back into our crumb cake. It's not gonna affect your um, ink pad because you're not putting a lot of ink on. Little tap on the door bar, bring it around the edges and down. We're going to start in the middle and I'm going to actually have some of it um, coming off the bottom like so. Nice image, and there we go. Let me see if I can bring that up. You can see the two-tone effect. Okay, and we're going to repeat it again. Now you can try dipping um, the top of your stamp into an ink pad, but the effect you're going to get is a lot deeper and a lot sharper in contrast. So now we're going to overlap it so it hangs off one side and overlaps onto the last stamped image, like so. One more time. And like I said, this, this technique, you really can't tell on the stamp how it's going to turn out until you've stamped it. And one more time, like so. There we go. So I'm gonna pop um, this part away, the green and the crumb cake for the moment. And I'm going to bring in my pre-stamped image, which is just in um, just the one crumb, crumb cake. And that's going to go on there. And I'm just gonna pop my dies in and cut this one out. Okay, We're, here we are. And I have cut out from the same DSP that is in the top of the lid. I have cut out this gorgeous little sprig which comes in the um, Grassy Groves um, dies as well. Here is my cutout image for the top. I'm going to pop him up with some dimensionals. And the bottom of it will be trimmed off as well. So him here where there's a bit of a space and I'm going to pop him all the way up and then I'm going to trim him back so that it fits along the bottom there. Next I am going to add my ribbon. Now again this will be on here and I'm going to add the ribbon around just this section. So I think in the book, uh, in the catalogue, it's um, a little bit different. Now it is going to mask up some of that, but that's okay, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie it here. Now my ribbon, I usually, 
usually tie to the side and then move it. So give it a little wiggle room, tie it on the side because I just find that easier. Just a double knot for this one. Try to make it close enough to, which is very tricky, there we go. So it's not bent, but at the same time, it's definitely um, snug. And then I'll just give that a little bit of a firmer tug. And then I'm gonna trim it back. And I'm gonna trim it back a fair bit because I don't want a lot of overhang. So one little bit. And an equal amount on that side. Clean off my desk a little bit and a little bit more glue this time to pop this one on there. Just gonna have it coming from underneath like that. And I'm going to glue this onto my lid of my box. Like so now you're gonna have to excuse my desk. My desk is in need of a bit of a revamp <laughs> at the moment. Um, I did have a mat down on it, but I accidentally um, used the heat tool on it and, and did melt it. So there we go. Now I did want to add um, a thank you. And in, in the catalog, it's a little um, bit bigger than what I wanted. So I'm going to pull out a piece of crumb cake. And that's so we get that matching crumb cake. And I am going to use the Evening Evergreen ink. Again, keeping in that theme. And I'm going to... Pop it up here, I think. Stamp. And there it is. I'm going to actually use my scissors this one out as well. I might use a different pair of scissors. Here we go. And give it a little bit of a trim back so it's not big at all. Trying to keep it as even as I can. There we go. A little thank you. All right. So the thank you I am going to pop um, maybe here, I might stick it like that. So again, a little bit of glue underneath and I'm going to stick it on here so that it does stand out from that ribbon. And that is our box complete. Similar, I guess you could say, to the catalogue. I'll bring the catalogue in so you can have a bit of a look. But enough different that um, I think it packs a punch. So there we go. There's the two. I'm going to pull those in together. There we go. Thanks very much, everyone, for joining me. Um, please pop over to everybody else's. Don't forget to like, comment and share um, for my YouTube um, channel. Um, every time we do one of these videos, I get a couple of new um, subscribers, which is wonderful. I love having everyone follow along with me. Um, in case you didn't know, I am a primary school teacher, so I am busy um, and I do work full time, but um, I do try to make time for this kind of project. I'll list all of the products that I've used today at the end of this video. If there's anything that you might like or need, um, please don't hesitate to contact me. I can definitely pop in orders for you. If, of course, you're not in Australia, then um, hop along to some of our other contributors and some of those will also be able to help you out. Until next time, everybody, thanks very much and happy stamping.